So I saw the title, King of the Mischievous South, and I was intrigued, uh, mainly because I got the sense that Denzel Curry was going to be tapping into uh, those regional sounds in the South. And I typically prefer when artists uh, tend to devote a whole project to repping their region. What is good, y'all? It is your boy, Mix Tame Off. If you are rocking with this content, go ahead and smash that like button for your boy. Uh, hitting that like button definitely helps and is greatly appreciated. But today, I'm going to hit y'all with my thoughts on this new project from Denzel Curry entitled King of the Mischievous South 2. Okay, so I'm not going to front like I'm some expert on Denzel Curry's catalog, but I have listened to a bulk of his albums over the years and I do understand his appeal. This is his first project since uh, 2022's Mel My Eyes, See Your Future, and it is being labeled as a mixtape that is supposed to prep fans for his upcoming album. Now this contains 15 songs lasting just uh, 34 minutes. But with that being said, let me go ahead and just hit y'all with that track by track breakdown. The opener, King of the Mischievous South 2, is an intro of featuring words from the underground Memphis rap legend, King Pin Skinny Pimp, uh, who does serve as a narrator throughout this project. So you're gonna hear his voice quite a bit here. And Skinny Pimp is setting the tone, uh, evoking that nostalgia out the gate letting the listener know that Memphis is going to uh, be, have a big influence on this project. Track two, Ultra Shit, uh, has this nocturnal hypnotic beat that does sample uh, from an obscure Memphis rap song from 1994 by Too Low entitled On That Devil Shit. Now this isn't the first time that uh, rare Memphis horrorcore hip hop songs have been sampled by bigger name artists, but Denzel makes it clear that uh, that is his intent on this project or one of his big intents. So yeah, this ended up being one of my favorites from the album and it does kind of remind me a bit of uh, some of his songs from Imperial for some reason, but yeah, dope mystical Southern rap. Track three said it features Maxo Cream out of H-Town and uh, it's set to an alarming icy beat that is a banger and it's semi-aggressive. And I think Maxo Cream was the perfect feature for this type of record. You know, I am looking forward to when Maxo Cream decides to drop his new one. But a couple of lines from Denzel Curry that did jump out to me were, whether it's earth, wind, or fire, you out of your element. My reign of terror is not for the weatherman. So it's simple but effective wordplay there. Right after his hot one with ASAP Ferg and Tia Corinne. Now this has a late night murky uh, Memphis beat that also samples from another dark horrorcore a record from the early 90s. The sample in particular is from uh, the Gimmissome family and the track is Fear No Evil from 93. And it's a grizzly banger that I suggest you check out if you haven't. Tia Corinne is a female rapper uh, who did her thing here and ASAP Ferg did bring uh, the ideal kind of energy that you'd want from him. So yeah, I did enjoy Hot One. Right after is Black Flag Freestyle with that Mexican OT who has had a, a pretty crazy feature run lately. Now this is backed by a more up-tempo uh, turnt style beat with the trap like horns. Uh, it's not quite as dark as some of the other records, but that Mexican OT uh, did get busy on the feature for sure. You know, he is one of those newer artists who doesn't often miss on his freestyles because he gives you exactly what you would expect from him. That high energy, the charisma, and those flows. And so Curry did have a funny line in which he said that he's not an emo rapper and he's not a herb. And the herb part was funny because that was some 90s slang that I didn't expect to hear from him. Immediately after his head crack interlude with more words from Kingpin Skinny Pimp over a scary backdrop that blends right into a G's Up with Two Chains and Mike Dimes. Now this instrumental in particular might be the most uh, horrifying. Two Chains came through with an entertaining verse. Uh, I did like Denzel's double time flow. I think he was channeling uh, Lord Infamous a bit, which was dope. And Mike Dimes did his thing as well. But yeah, this was an aggressive song with that F you pay me type energy. Following this is the lunatic interlude with more words from Skinny Pimp set to a 3-6 sample, uh, and that leads right into Sked uh, with Kenny Mason and the legendary Project Pat. This has a bass thumping, speakers blown type beat that does sample 3-6 Mafia's victims 
uh, of their shift. So you're getting that old school meets new school feel. I'm not familiar with Kenny Mason, but he did go in and Project Pat delivered as expected. You know, it is uh, a real treat when we get verses from Pat these days. Track 10, Choose Wisely mellows things out a bit with the glistening beat. Uh, and that transitions right into Cole Pimp featuring Juicy J and Ty Dolla Sign. So this has a super luxurious epic instrumental. I'm not going to front on the vibes, but I did feel, I did feel that Ty Dolla Sign's feature sounded a bit out of place. And here's why. He's not a Southern artist. So you may say, well, Mixtape Moth, there are other artists on this project who aren't Southern. And yes, you are absolutely correct. It's just that those other artists uh, are giving Southern or they are rapping to that Southern aesthetic on this project and Ty Dolla Sign is not. This is still the same Ty Dolla Sign that you would get on any other commercial release or any type of West Coast album. And that's okay, but it just didn't feel innately Southern uh, given the title. I wasn't given those Memphis vibes. I wasn't given those Houston vibes, etc. And that bugged me a little bit. I know. Probably a very unpopular opinion, but it is what it is. A track 12 wish list with Armani White. It's a highlight. I was happy with the brisk Willie Hutch sample uh, that did put me in the frame of mind of a big crit instrumental meets some 3-6. You know, it's very soulful, very vintage, and it was screaming for a Big Crit feature. Man, I really wish they put Big Crit on here, and I also wish that Big Crit would kind of go back into uh, his bag of making those traditional type of bangers that we knew him for at one point in his career. Not too familiar with Armani White, but uh, I did like the double time flow here. Uh, and this is probably an underrated song from the project. I mean, you just really can't go wrong with a Willie Hutch sample. Now the remaining two tracks do take on a different twist sonically. Track 13, Hit the Floor, features a ski mask the Slump God, and we get a stripped back instrumental with that distorted bass. It's not a favorite, but it does capture a vibe. It is a high energy belligerent banger. Uh, not much lyrical content, but it, I get it. The same could be said for the last song, uh, Hoodlums with ASAP Rocky and Play That Boys. Although this instrumental I found to be more appealing. It has that chaotic disorienting type of beat that may Make you want to rage or just smash something if that's your thing. And this project officially wraps up with King the Mischievous uh, Style 2 outro, which just has some closing words from Kingpin Skinny Pimp. So overall, I'm going to give this project a rating of four mics. Now, the lyrical content isn't crazy on this album. There aren't a lot of quotables, but there really didn't need to be any because that's not what Denzel Curry was going for with this album. This did come across as a rugged mixtape that was devoted to paying homage to some Southern regional sounds that have influenced Denzel Curry throughout his career. There was a major focus on uh, the Memphis horrorcore sound, obviously, but it appears that he's also been influenced by uh, Houston artists as well. This project was short uh, and sweet, it just over the 30 minute mark, so it's not one that uh, will get you bored or bogged down due to a long length, thankfully. My only real issue is, uh, I guess, I just wish there were more actual artists from the South, given the title. You know, for instance, I would have liked to have seen a Big Crit feature, a Sauce Waka feature, and a Key Glock feature. Of course, there's more, but those are three that instantly came to mind. Yeah, this project was dope for what it was. Uh, if you're just in the mood for hypnotic, of bangers that mostly pay homage to Southern hip hop, then you will find this to be a fun listen. My favorite tracks include Ultra Shit, Set It, Hot One, Black Flag Freestyle, G's Up, Scat, and Wishlist. But let me know your thoughts on this project in the comment section. It's your boy Mixtape Moth. I am signing out, but as always, it's peace and blessings. Denzel Curry, King of the Mischievous South 2.